Welcome back, everybody. We have another week of MBA action. This week, we are playing against the Phoenix Solgaleos, who are sitting at 2-0. Uh, this video is a little late. I, I played the game like five, six days ago, so some of the information might be a little fuzzy in my head. Uh, so apologies in advance, but we're going to get through it uh, the best way that we can. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and let's head on into our team comparison because we made a few changes. So what we're looking at, our, our team looks a little bit different. So we ended up dropping four members off of our team. We dropped Snorlax, uh, Blastoise, Murkrow, and Thunderous in favor of picking up Roaring Moon, Mega Houndoom, and Sil Valley. So uh, the biggest criticism I think of my team is that it wasn't really threatening enough and I, I completely agreed. So we're just going to lean full into the weather war uh, and add some more sun synergy. So Houndoom with that solar power and Protosynthesis on the Roaring Moon, who is our new Terra Captain, by the way, uh, is going to be really great. But looking at my opponent's team here, uh, Arceus for the second week in a row is not something that I love to see. <laughs> um, he is running Arceus Fire along with Zekrom. He's also got Chien Pao, his Terra Captain, in Landorus T, Clefable, Nihiligo, Porygon 2, Jellicent, Cradley, and Orthworm. So he's got a really scary team, uh, a lot of really scary threats, but I think that our team matches up pretty nicely against it. Uh, you might be a little surprised at some of the options we bring with our team builder. Uh, spoiler, we're only bringing a single Uber, which in hindsight might not be the best thing in the world <laughs> uh, for the league that we're playing in. Uh, but I was really happy with the team that I put together and I really wanted to see if it could work. So uh, what we're going to do now, uh, for those of you that want to stick around and watch the team builder, you can. Uh, but for those of you that just want to check it out below in the description and you want to skip ahead straight to the game, uh, I'll show a timestamp on screen uh, right now and you guys can skip ahead to that. But for those of you that are sticking around, let's hop right into the team builder with our first member of the docket, the team captain. It's Groudon. Let's go take a look. First up is Groudon. This is an indirect counter to the majority of the Solgaleo's team in a niche situation. This set will be running max attack with a Jolly Nature and an Adrenaline Orb. The goal of this set is to get a matchup against Landorus T to up my speed and try to get up a Swords Dance. After that, Groudon should outspeed the majority of my opponent's team minus a Choice Scarfmon and can use the combination of Precipice Blades, Fire Punch, and Hammer Arm to do massive damage to his roster. So this, this strategy is a little bit on the niche side, but you know, Landorus having that Intimidate seems like a relatively safe uh, switch into my Groudon for the most part. You know, uh, doesn't get hit by any of the ground type moves, can switch in on a fire type move like pretty reliably. So, uh, you know, if we get Intimidated at any point during the game, it could actually be really, really great for us. So that is Groudon. And you know, if we're bringing Groudon, we have to bring Venusaur as well. A lot of my team is focused around Sun. I mean, the majority of the weeks that I play this, it's gonna be focused around Sun, but we are heavy into Sun Synergy this week. So uh, let's go check out Venusaur. Up next is our patented Venusaur, this time running a Heat Rock. A lot of my team revolves around Sun Synergy this week, so I wanted to maximize its value. For my set, I'll be running Max Special Attack with Earth Power and Weather Ball on top of Sunny Day and Growth for a boost in power. Venusaur provides a reliable check to Zekrom and Arceus with ground coverage, as well as a check to Chien Pao, which is a very scary threat to my team. Very cut and dry, really simple. Uh, Venusaur is, you know, uh, we're going to lean into Venusaur being like a relatively good offensive threat just about every week. But with the Heat Rock, we're going to get three extra turns out of our sun because we have more options on our team uh, that want to take advantage of that. And uh, Groudon running an Adrenaline Orb and not being able to keep the sun up for a longer period of time is kind of the weakness there. So third up on the team is a new member of our team that we just talked about. It's Roaring Moon, our new Terra Captain. Uh, this is a really fun set. Let's go check it out. Up third is a new member to our team in Roaring Moon. Our new Terra Captain will also be Terra Poison this week, running a Choice Scarf. With Protosynthesis, I gain an attack boost under the sun with this set, which essentially puts me at a Dragon Dance buff immediately when I enter the field. For my moveset, I'll be running Earthquake for Arceus, Terra Blast Poison for threats like Clefable, Outrage for huge damage into Zekrom and the majority of his team, as well as Brick Break for super effective damage into Porygon 2 and to help deal with potential screens. This moon is stupid broken. Uh, this mod is crazy, and for it to be a Terra Captain is going to provide so much depth for my team in weeks to come, I feel. Uh, so I'm really, really happy to have it on the team and see what it does. Uh, but another mod that I'm really happy to see how it does is one of my favorite Megas ever and a really underrated Pokemon in my opinion, and that is Mega Houndoom. Oh, it's such a fun, such a cool looking mod, uh, but the set is even cooler. So let's go look at it. Fourth on the list is another newcomer this week in Mega Houndoom. This set is really cool as it runs solar power with a timid nature and investment to live in Earthquake from Orceus. If I can manage to get a nasty plot off, Houndoom tears through the Solgaleo's roster. 
However, simply clicking Overheat Under the Sun does tons of damage as well. We'll also be running Stab Dark Pulse, which helps with the Jellicent matchup, as well as Sludge Bomb for Clefable. This set is one of my favorites of the week, and I'm really excited to see how it does. Houndoom's so cool, man. That design on the Mega is, like, just top-notch. I'm really sad that it's not as good as some of the others, uh, but, you know, the design, I think, gets a lot of love from, from a very small group of people, uh, which I'm, I'm happy to be a part of. But as we clean up the team here, now we have tons and tons of offense, so we need a little bit more support. Uh, so what better uh, to lead that support than our Grim Snarl. Let's go take a look. Next up, we need some support for our Sun Sweepers this week, and there's no better option than Grim Snarl. This Grim Snarl is very similar to last week, and we'll be running a standard Prankster set with dual screens and light clay. The only difference this week is that we'll be running Play Rough to hopefully catch a Zekrom switch in for a little bit of chip damage. Parting Shot also provides valuable stat drops and pivot potential, which the rest of my team lacks. Uh, nothing, nothing super crazy with Grimmsnarl, obviously, you know, it's going to be kind of pigeonholed into that screen setting role each week, but having Prankster and being able to have really, really scary offensive threats sit behind those and, uh, kind of mitigate the damage for my team there, I think is really, really important. So really happy to have that. Excuse me. Uh, so last up on the team, as you've noticed, we're only <laughs> bringing a single Uber. So that means no Reshiram or Lugia this week, uh, which is a really interesting decision. Don't think it's a good one, mind you, but, uh, you know, it's... It's something that I'm having fun with. And I think this Mew set is like my favorite thing ever. Uh, Mew just has so much coverage and so much depth that I can do with it. Um, and I really like the set this week. So let's go uh, take a peek at what we're doing with that. Last up, we're going to bring Mew. Spikes do a ton of work this week against my opponent's uber threats, as well as things like Orthworm and Nihiligo. The goal is to lead this max special attack Mew and hopefully get up some hazards. However, we have some potential offense as well. In the event that my opponent leaves Landorus and doesn't Terra, Mew almost guarantees a kill with Ice Beam. Also, we'll be running a Colber Berry for the Chien Pao matchup. By having damage from Crunch, Mew always lives one hit and almost assuredly nets a revenge kill with Fire Blast. Mew has a ton of potential to swing the game in my favor this week, and I'm really excited to see what it can do. And there you have it. That's the team for this week. Pretty cut, pretty uh, pretty dry for the most part. Uh, dry under the sun, I guess you could say. Uh, but really, really stoked for this matchup. We're sitting at one and one, so really want to bounce back and uh, get a nice victory this week moving on to week four. So uh, without further ado, let's just head on over to the match and let's see how it goes. I'll see you there. Alrighty, and we are here ready to start our match with Didi. Uh, I, I keep saying that I'm going to go back to live commentary, and I promise that I will. Sometimes I just forget. And when I played this game, I was at work because my opponent lives in the EU. So I had to play, you know, very early afternoon uh, where I wasn't really able to, to record at my leisure, I guess you could say. So we're matching up here. Uh, pretty scary threads all across the board. He's got Arceus and Zekrom, obviously. There's the Chien Pao, uh, Terra Landorus, and he's also brought Nihiligo, which I assume is for hazards, and Pori too, which can really, really do uh, a lot of work against my team. So as we hop into the match here, my play is always the same at the start. We're just going to lead Mew, and we're going to look to set up hazards. But like I said before in the team builder, if we get a matchup against either Chien Pao or Landorus, we have two moves to click. And this is the lander. So I'm expecting that he's thinking that I'm going to set up Stealth Rock Spike, something of that nature. Uh, so I'm going to pull one out from under the rug and I'm just going to go for Ice Beam, which thankfully for me, just straight up knocks out Landorus. So we don't have to deal with Terra Landorus whatsoever. And then we get the dream situation. So uh, before I get to this next play here, uh, Groudon, unfortunately, the set on that is going to be far less useful now because there's no Intimidate for us to worry about. But getting rid of Lando early is really important. And he goes into Chan Pao. So against Pao here, you know, I assume that maybe he looked at my game last week and I did run Overheat Mew last week, which was really, really good for me. So maybe he's going to do a little bit of scouting here, which he eventually does. But I'm just clicking Fire Blast. Unfortunate for us. Uh, he doubles into Arceus here. We get a Fire Blast off for a little bit of chip damage, uh, but nothing doing there. If pa if Pow would have stayed in and crunched me and I hit Fire Blast, we're already up like two months and uh, we're in a really good spot. But now Arceus is in and this thing is horrifying to deal with. So uh, my best option in this situation is just to double into Groudon and I'm going to set up Drought and he goes just for Fire Type Judgment and that does oodles and oodles of damage uh looking at calcs and stuff this is almost assuredly max special attack modest arceus uh, which does really really tough work to my team <laughs> i'll be totally honest um so with that in mind i feel like i have to save groudon for a little bit later i'm just going to go into my grim snarl and take a hit because i know that i can and i'm just going to start setting up screens so 
He makes a really cool play here, actually, as I'm setting up screens, and he actually goes into Porygon and traces my Prankster, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, it's good for the rest of my team, but against my Grimstar all being a dark type, Prankster moves actually are, uh, I'm unaffected by them. So if he wants to go for like recover, well, not recover, he can still recover, but like T-Wave or anything, I'm actually not affected by that at all. So uh, I'm pretty free to set up a Reflect here. He goes for an Ice Beam to kill me. And now I'm in a good spot where I can start going into my Venusaur. So I only got a single turn of Sun left, but I, I can pretty freely go for a growth here. Uh, I know that I can tank Ice Beam from this thing, and getting my two times attack boost is really huge. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. But unfortunately, he does go for a Thunder Wave, uh, but we're Omega boosted now. Our screens are still up, and he goes into Arceus. And I actually read this switch and go straight for an Earth Power. So I'm, I'm fully expecting the Arceus to come in here, and we take him all the way down to 2%, which is really great, but just so unfortunate that we couldn't actually get a kill on this thing. Uh, because, you know, Venusaur, even though we don't have the sun up, we're a really big threat right now. Uh, so I'm going to go for an Earth Power. He's just going to Judgment me. That does so much damage through screens. And thankfully, we're able to break through Paralysis and get a kill there. So things are going really well. Uh, we've gotten rid of Landorus. You know, we've gotten rid of Arceus, which is another main threat. But Zekrom is so stupid. It's such a good mod. Um, and out comes Champau. So... I'm faced with an interesting situation here. There's nothing really on my team that I want to take like a crunch or an ice spinner. So I'm pretty okay with Venusaur just dying here because now I can just go straight back into my roaring. Actually, I, I was thinking that I was going to go back into Mew here, um, but I actually decided to go roaring moon because I'm choice scarfed and I don't anticipate this uh, Champau being a scarf set. Uh, the thing is like wicked fast. So even if he is choice scarfed, uh, I can always live an Ice Spinner through screens, and I can go for a Brick Break and knock him out here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. He goes into Porygon. I go for a Brick Break. We do 26%, uh, which is not a great amount of damage to do. Obviously, we don't have Sun Up, and we don't have our Protosynthesis rocking. That's a really hard word to say. <laughs> um, so we're not going to do a whole lot of damage there, unfortunately, and I don't want to get paralyzed, so I'm going to go straight into Groudon. He's going to trace my drought, which is pretty funny. Goes for a T-Wave, but we are immune. So now that I have Groudon in, my sun is really limited. But I do not want to pass up an opportunity to get off a big hammer arm on this Porygon. Uh, because this thing's a really big threat to my team. So that's exactly what I do. We do 37%, which isn't bad. And I can manage a sack here. And now we only have about three turns of sun left. But now my Roaring Moon at 37%. This Brick Break should be very, very close to killing. It did about 25% last time with the one boost. You know, we're doing 150% of our normal damage. So I'm thinking this is going to be a roll, basically. So I come in, I go for a Brick Break, and unfortunately we get, um, which I believe is like one of the worst rolls that we can. Uh, it's anywhere from like 35 to like 42% or something. Um, but he does just go for a T-Wave and miss, fortunately for us. I think that he, you know, could have gone for like a recover or something there. Um, but him going for T-Wave and missing was absolutely huge for me. Because now I'm just free to Brick Break again. And Porygon's going to go down. So at this point, he actually goes into Chen Pao, which is really interesting. Because um, I'm thinking that maybe he thinks I am Choice Banded. Uh, so... Uh, because, you know, my, my Protosynthesis raised my attack. But a fun thing with the ability is that it takes into account the stats before any items. So it takes into account that my base attack is actually higher than my speed before my Scarf goes off. So I'm Scarf and he doesn't know that, which is really great for me. Because I could just tear a Poison just in case I don't kill. And I actually just get a kill onto Chen Pao. But now comes Zekrom. This mod is an absolute terror um and there are a lot of ways that the game could go south for me here i'm almost positive that this thing is going to be some offensive set it's either going to be like choice scarf choice bandit or a dragon dance if it's dragon dance i'm in a lot of trouble but i cannot do enough damage between like mew with ice beam and this with brick break i feel like i have to save my roaring moon and hope that he goes for an attack and then I can switch back in and go for Outrage. And then Outrage basically wins me the game because I don't think Nihiligo can really take a whole lot of damage from me. So I decide that I'm going to go into Mew for a switch here. He goes for a Dragon Dance. Now I'm going to go for an Ice Beam. He decides to go for the second dance. 
so here here's the interesting part of the game and, and you know all credit to Didi in this in this interaction here um, he needs to roll the dice on a potential freeze or crit or something here because at plus one now that he knows that I'm choice scar for Roaring Moon he needs to be faster than me and at plus one Zekrom is not faster so he has to go for the second dance here I'm gonna go for an ice beam we do about 50 percent but no crit unfortunately and bolt strike is just going to annihilate us he goes for a dragon claw even though i'm poison type that's going to kill me as well a mega hound doom at the end of the game here you know even with the mega evolution obviously with how monstrous uh the zekrom attack is uh we we basically have no hope of living there so all the credit to dd ggs that was such a fun game to play um and, and he played to his out he he navigated that end game perfectly so all the credit to him um ubers is such a crazy crazy format things are so snowbally and uh honestly i think that i played i think that i played really well for the most part you know obviously like i managed my sacks a little bit um the only thing that i think i maybe could have done a little bit better is maybe try to preserve ground on just a little bit more but getting the damage on the porygon obviously in that situation is really really important too so um with that being said we are going to move to one and two on the season uh next week we are playing against kumos uh who i believe has a kiram white team and like mega scissor and stuff so um it's going to be a really fun matchup. Uh, we're in the midst of trying to schedule that game right now. But uh, GG's once again to the Phoenix Soul Galales. They're sitting at 3 all on the season. And my opponent this week now is also 3 0. So we have a really rough draw for this first part of the season, uh, being brand new to the format. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just about how well you play and uh, having a good time. So I, I'm really having uh, like a decent time with this. Uh, it's a big learning experience, but. Uh, that does not come without growing pains for sure. So hopefully going to bring some more uh, fun sets next week. Going to get more of the Ubers involved, I think. Uh, but I think that my team's a lot more threatening now than it used to be. So, uh, you know, people can't count us out. And uh, we'll be raring and ready to go for week four. We're going to have to start playing really well if we want to make the top eight and make playoffs after nine weeks, but still plenty of season left to go. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching as always. Uh, we'll be back with another video really soon, either APDL or NBA, and uh, you guys can look forward to that too. So uh, that's all for me. Go Winded Wave Crash, and we'll see you next time. Peace.